Hi, my name is Allison Clark, and welcome to another episode of Cowbells and Conversations. I am very excited to have someone who is the relationship expert in connecting effectively, my friend, Patrick Galvin. And we have known each other since, actually, you're the one who told me to get involved with the National Speakers Association. And then also, you served as president in Oregon before I did. And you said it was one of the best things you've ever done. And because of you and that connection, I joined NSA. I started my own company. So we go back years. And I want to thank you for really planting the seeds in my career. So I'm going to have you kick it off. Tell everyone a little bit more about yourself and, and what you do about connecting others. Allison, it is so fun to have a chance to talk to you. And when I think about my legacy, Certainly to NSA, you are my legacy because you've done so much for the organization. So I'm so glad you decided to join. Uh, and I remember the first time I connected with you, I saw just the incredible energy that you have. Mm -hmm. And that's what I pick up on uh, with all uh, relationships that I start out with people is just uh, the enthusiasm that some people naturally have for connecting. And, and you absolutely have it. Mm -hmm. And this Thank has you. been my business theme as a speaker hundred percent since my book, The Connector's Way came out. I have been speaking about how people can build relationships uh, in the business world and their personal lives that will enrich them both financially and psychically and in so many different ways. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, uh, it, I, I am one of those lucky speakers who gets to talk about what they're most passionate about. I love it. Now tell me, how many books have you sold now? Because last I heard it was 15,000. How many it? Yeah. So the Connectors Way came out in 2016. Yep. We're at about 20,000 now. Oh my gosh. Congratulations. Very, very exciting. Thank you. Uh, we're up to 231 reviews on Amazon. And I just wow. got word that the Chinese version of the book is coming out um, at the end of December. Uh, they're illustrating it, which is going to be very exciting. So not only will I have to decipher the Chinese characters, but I'm going to have to decipher what are those pictures all about? Right? Like, really, is this what really I wanted them to say? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, that's good. So connecting can mean so many things to so many different people. So we connect so often now via email and texting, which of course can be misunderstood. And we both know the power of really building relationships to be successful in our business life, but also in our personal life. So what are some things that you are really seeing that works as far as some effective ways to connect with people? Well, actually, I'm, I'm sitting in an example of one of those right now. I yeah, love it. <laughs> no, I am not in the middle of Wisconsin. Uh, <laughs> this is a uh, projection of something that's important to you. I love the name of your uh, series, Cowbells and Conversation. <laughs> yeah, there you go. All right, I, I think that brown one back there needs a bell. Right. <laughs> So I'm, I'm a big believer that when it comes to relationship building and connecting, it is so important to be where the person you want to connect with is. And that is, mm -hmm. if they happen to have a cool video interview series called Cowbells and Connections, well, why not find some cows to put in the background? Mm -hmm. uh, and if someone wants to communicate with you by text and not email, then communicate by text. If someone mm -hmm. wants to meet face by face, don't try to do things on Zoom. Mm -hmm. um, Really, I think the key to relationship building is put yourself in the shoes of the other. Mm -hmm. And that could be as mundane as how they like to communicate to really trying to figure out how you can be of service. Mm -hmm. Because so much of what I've seen from great connectors is their ability to think outside themselves and mm -hmm. to really put themselves where that other person is. Mm -hmm. I love it. And it's, it's really the platinum rule to treat others the way they want to be treated yes, instead of yeah. the way you want to be treated. You know, it's like, oh, well, I want to communicate this way. Well, really to figure out what's going to be most effective will have the best results. Yes, exactly. There's so many tools and ways to communicate now. And mm -hmm. it's easy to have your favorites. And there's nothing wrong with that. But really, if you want to build rapport and relationship, I love Tony Alessandro's platinum rule. I mean, it is, mm -hmm. is brilliant. Mm -hmm. And I think it's more important now than ever before because we have so many choices mm -hmm. and it's a lot easier instead of us trying to choose what's going to really impress somebody to figure out, you know, what do they use and what's going to make them feel comfortable. Oh, for sure. And because there's so much competition in business, what are you seeing from your point of view 
as far as when people go back to old school, meaning, you know, handwritten notes, more customized communication, how is that giving people a business advantage? Because I see a lot of people planning the operation sides of business, but they really forget to really be more intentional about how they're connecting with people. So what are you seeing as far as in business when people really customize that? What are you, what's your thoughts on that? Well, we live in a world in which there's so much marketing clutter and there are so many people trying to broadcast what they're doing. And we have platforms, we have our blogs and we can do videos and we can send out newsletters and we can, with one press of our button, ostensibly communicate with thousands. Mm -hmm. The reality is we are doing what everyone else is doing and our messages are generic. They're not really connected to that, that individual who's necessary, who's opening the email. Mm -hmm. um, I think on your LinkedIn, you say, sent does not mean received. I couldn't agree with you more on that. Mm -hmm. um, so when you do these old school things, whether it's picking up the phone, whether it's meeting face to face mm -hmm. for coffee, whether it's send sending someone a thank you note, these are all things that deeply connect you with that other person. Mm -hmm. And the reason why that's so important, and I think the reason why so many business people are coming back to this, is when people think about what's allowed them to be successful throughout their career, and who are those people that have brought them to the table and been the alpha point for so much business, it's not lots of people. A lot of people can so count true. on one hand, five people who brought a significant, if not the majority of their business. So true. So if you start to just default to the automatic, to the broadcasting approach, and you don't nurture and cultivate those relationships, mm -hmm. you're not sticking with the people who brought you to the dance and you're not building those connections that might create that next super fan that you're gonna have. Mm -hmm. And I think the good news is uh, folks are beginning to really sit down and examine what's worked for them in the past. And then they say, okay, these older school techniques take time. Mm -hmm. But what's the ROI on that versus just trying to communicate with thousands? Mm -hmm. So true. And we also see a lot in the month of December, people show appreciation to their clients. It could be they only reach out to their friends that time of year. So what advice would you give people to not just focus on holiday connections, but how can they be unique, but also keep this energy up all year long to really build relationships with with their clients and customers, but also in their personal life. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think it's get involved uh, with things that you're passionate about. Um, you know, a lot of folks say, well, I don't have time to join a service organization. I'm a big rotary person. I've been mm -hmm. in rotary for seven years. I joined for service, but mm -hmm. when I look at my business, I can see a good chunk of my business has come from those connections. Mm -hmm. So yes, it takes, uh, an hour every week, I go to lunch, I sit on the, uh, I'm the president of our trust board, so we oversee the dollars for our Rotary Club. Um, and I'm doing something that I'm passionate about and I'm serving with other people who are passionate and I'm making connections and building relationships with folks who get to know me. Mm -hmm. And you know, as Bob Berg said, we do business with and refer business to those who, who, who we know, like, and trust. Yep. And by getting out there in groups mm. that we're passionate about, it allows us to build that rapport. And then with people who we do know, it's very easy to kind of be out of sight, out of mind. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to be very intentional about the people who are important to us. We need to write their names down and we need to have specific goals for connection with those people who are important to us. We need mm -hmm. to really map out our connections. Mm -hmm. And if you have those 10 to 20 people who brought you a ton of business mm -hmm. uh, in the past and whose opinions you really value, and you look down at that list that's on your desk or somewhere very accessible on your smartphone and say, boy, I haven't seen that person mm -hmm. in four months. I need to invite them out to lunch. I need to get mm -hmm. together with them. I need to call them. Mm -hmm. um, so we just need to be very intentional to make mm -hmm. sure that we stay connected throughout the year. And no, you know, Thanksgiving or uh, a Christmas message doesn't cut it. It really mm -hmm. doesn't. Mm -hmm. Good. So as people are planning goals for 2020, make this a part of goal setting to really figure out block time for when you're gonna call these people, set up a time for lunch, coffee, whatever it might be. But that's a huge part of goal setting that I think a lot of people forget is to really nurture the relationships instead of here's your sales goal that you have, um, how are we gonna get there? But really go back to the people and do those things that other people aren't making the time to do. Absolutely, I think relationship building goals, specific names, 
points of connection with people. It, it's just so important, but it's not something we learn in school. I went to business school and I studied marketing and finance and statistics yep. and other people do the same thing, but you don't have a single course on relationship building. Mm -hmm. Yet That's those so who really true. are successful in business are either inherently relationship builders or they've learned that it, it pays to be a relationship builder and they're intentional about it. Right, I love it. So if you were to give people just three easy things to do in the next 30 days, what would be three easy things, considering that it is a crazier time of year, but what can everyone do that would really impact their relationships? But also we know that that will give us more energy when our relationships are more fulfilled. So yeah. what are three easy actions that you would suggest everyone do? Well, I want to endorse an action that I think you're doing right now, which is sending out a thank you card a day. Is your, do you have a 15 day challenge on it, Allison? Is that? Well, I do all sorts of crazy challenges, but I just sent 12 thank you notes, or excuse me, uh, Thanksgiving cards of yeah. notes of gratitude. Yeah. So I do some sort of reach out daily, whether it's a text, an email, and this could be to my children, but I let, I, I do a kind act every day, but yeah. just like some sort of, but I have, I've seen that before yeah. where people write a thank you note a day and how life-changing that can be because yes. your gratitude is just constantly on your mind about like, who is one person I need to thank? Yes, exactly. And I, I think it's sort of uh, at this time of year, I think that's a great thing to do. Write a note at the beginning of the day to someone you appreciate. And if that person is an email person, then you could send them an email. But if it's yep. not, or if you really want to impress a little bit more, then get some nice stationery and do, and do a card. And don't worry about your handwriting. No one cares. Right. They care how much you care, not how good your handwriting is. Exactly. They don't care how, what grade you got in second grade cursive. It doesn't matter. <laughs> so send the, send the note, um, you know, send an email or pick up the phone and call somebody just once a day, an intentional act. And then mm -hmm. just take measure of that. You know, mm -hmm. what, did that, what did that do for you? Mm -hmm. um, how did it make you feel? How did it make the other person feel? Mm -hmm. And you could actually then be inspired to do another best practice, which I th don't think is done nearly enough. Uh, the vast majority of folks, 85% of all working age Americans have a LinkedIn profile. Mm -hmm. Many people do not have a single recommendation on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And most people only have recommendations on LinkedIn because somebody has um, been asked to write one. Mm -hmm. There are very few people who spontaneously write them. Mm -hmm. So for those key professional connections between now and year end, give Love yourself it. a challenge. Why not do five spontaneous recommendations of people? You've got to be connected to them first. Mm -hmm. You can go into LinkedIn. You can write a very fast recommendation for someone, short paragraph, three to yep. five sentences. Doesn't need to be longer. And then just click send and see yep. what happens. I'm going to do that. Very easy. And uh, you will be amazed at how enthused people will be. I mean, I've gotten calls back saying, you know, I have 30 recommendations on LinkedIn. You're only the second person who's ever done one without my asking for it. Oh, wow. Yep. Yeah. So low hanging fruit. It's, it's not hard. Yep. It's not hard. And then a third one that I think is a very powerful one, and I can't take credit for inventing this. Uh, I'm, I'm a fan of Keith Ferrazzi, who wrote a book mm -hmm. called Never Eat Alone. Yep. And in it, he has this um, great tip, and I've shared it with clients who've implemented it which is connect your connections. So go mm -hmm. into your LinkedIn or if you're old school, your Rolodex or however you organize your contacts, find two people and invite them out, coffee, lunch, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever works for them, mm -hmm. put them together. Uh, when's the last time Maybe. someone has done this for you? Yes. And when someone does this for you, how does it make you feel? Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's not hard. I, I have a client who's an introvert and this is her single biggest marketing practice. She doesn't like networking events. Mm -hmm. She feels on the spot when she's in one-on-one -on -one conversation. And she says, by bringing two people together, regardless of whether or not they click, either personally or professionally, right. they're always incredibly grateful for her being this bridge. Yes. And we all know people who should know each other. Exactly. And why not become that point of connection? Yep. I love it. Good. So reach out via text, email, handwritten card. Or phone give, call. Or phone call. Yes. Yeah. Um, write five recommendations before January 1st. Mm -hmm. And then think about who you could connect that would really be effective, that would bring them both benefit, but also happiness in, in meeting each other. Yes, exactly. I love it! That! Yep. Oh, I got a couple. I think, yeah. Beth, I think yeah. Bessie yeah. back there is jealous. She wants yeah. one too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that's definitely the cowbell idea because it's to be intentional about how we are connecting. Because as we start to look into 2020, when you look at your success, it really does go back to relationships. 
And it's easy things that so many people do not do. And I want to tell you, congratulations again for your huge success on your book, but also the difference that you're making in different industries just by making them more aware of how to be more accountable and then also just how to connect more effectively. Well, um, we're, de people, oh. we're definitely in the same tribe, Alice. And I, when I, whenever I follow in your footsteps as a speaker, I, say, I hear people say, man, your message is so much like Allison. So <laughs> coming from <laughs> you, know, that compliment means a lot. <laughs> right. um, and then if people want more information about what you do, how can people find you? Well, the, I think the easiest way is just to go to theconnectorsway.com, which is the okay. title of my book. And then it's got speaking links and all sorts of other cool things there. Okay, fabulous. Well, thank you so much for being a guest. And let's all connect more effectively today, but also as we look into 2020. So thank you. Thank you so much, Allison. Appreciate it.